So now, next up, Randy Ross and Judy Gumbo. Randy, Randy has spent the last 18 months helping Lady Borton prepare the memoirs of Madame Nguyen Thi Binh. Judy Gumbo is an author and original yippie. Please welcome them. Before we begin our reading of Madame Bin's autobiography, we're just going to give you a little bit of background. Not everyone in the world actually does know who Madame Nguyen Thi Binh is. Madame Bin was a leader during the Paris peace talks. As a young woman, she organized against the French occupation, was imprisoned, and nearly executed. After the war, she served for a decade as education minister and two terms as vice president. Today, along with many other projects, Madame Bin tirelessly supports those among three generations of, Orange, of Agent Orange victims. Judy and I have known each other since our time in Berkeley in the late 60s. In 1970, we each separately visited North Vietnam. When I returned to Vietnam in 2013, I met with Madame Bin, who gave me a copy of her autobiography. Since then, I have worked with Madame Bin's translator in Hanoi, Lady Borton, to help with revisions for an updated version. I also returned to Vietnam in 2013 with a delegation invited to help celebrate the 40th anniversary of the Paris Peace Accords. We traveled from Hanoi to Ho Chi Minh City, and everywhere we went, there were signs that greeted us, and those signs said, warm welcome to the peace and anti-war activists. Over and over again, people thanked us for our efforts to help shorten the war. This I know. Such appreciation wasn't just meant for our tiny delegation. It was meant for every single person here in this room and for all the millions of us who marched to protest the war. Protest does indeed have power. <laughs> so we'll now read to you a few sh very short segments from Madame Bin's memoir, Family, Friends, and Country. For 14 years, between 1962 and 1976, I was active in foreign relations for the National Liberation Front and the Provisional Revolutionary Government of South Vietnam. As I look across my life, those years comprise the period most worthy of note, for they cover some of our country's major events which I witnessed and in which I had the very good fortune to participate. In addition to taking part in the Paris Peace Conference, my other primary work was mobilizing international support for our resistance. We can say that voices from everywhere, from large cities to remote villages, including even those close to the North Pole, announced solidarity with Vietnam. Everyone agrees today that the international solidarity movement formed in opposition to the American War of Aggression was extremely important in contributing to Vietnam's victory. One of our key objectives was to gather the support of anti-war and peace groups in the United States. The first time I met representatives of the American anti-war movement was at a two-day conference held in Bratislava in 1967. I was not impressed with these Americans at first sight. <laughs> they were not dressed tidily, <laughs> and their way of speaking seemed overly casual. Yet, when I described the situation in Vietnam, the American participants listened attentively and asked many questions. I spoke especially about the war in the South, including the American military's crimes, and I expressed our people's aspirations for peace and independence. By the end, we were holding hands, promising to alert the public, especially in the US, to the reality of what was happening in Vietnam, a war the American public had never wanted. 
Of course, I could not visit the United States during the war years, but I did meet Americans in gatherings organized by U.S. groups opposed to the war. Many U.S. delegations came to Paris to visit us. They made a beautiful impression on us, particularly the American women who wanted the war to end and to have peace so their husbands and sons could avoid the draft and an early death. Many American friends could not hold back their tears when they heard descriptions of the suffering of Vietnamese women and children. These meetings were held mainly at the initiative of Women's Strike for Peace. After 1975, I met again old friends such as Cora Weiss and Mary Clark from the US. I can never forget them because they spent a precious part of their lives fighting bravely for Vietnam. There were many demonstrations, often with women as the majority of participants. A photograph from a demonstration in Miami, Florida in 1972 contains a detail particularly moving to me. One of the sisters is wearing a t-shirt with an image of Madame Bin and the slogan, Live Like Her. I've recently learned that many women wore Madame Bin t-shirts at demonstrations across the US. Those American women were truly courageous. These international friends live according to political and humane ideals. Their happiness comes from following those ideals. One person I want to emphasize is Dave Dellinger, one of the first Americans to visit North Vietnam and also someone who held firmly to his positions on peace and justice. And then at this point, uh, Madame Bin goes on in her memoir to list a number of her special friends by name, including Cora Weiss, uh, Tom Hayden, and Rennie Davis, and John McAuliffe, all of whom are part of this conference. Up until now, US officials, particularly in the military, believed that had the Americans plunged headlong by using their full military strength, the US probably would have achieved victory. These are the shallow and blind views of those who saw apparent facts, but not the essence of the issue. They saw the temporal unfold before their eyes, but they did not see the whole. Therefore, they could neither perceive nor foresee the underlying, inevitable, and ultimate conclusion. Suppose Vietnam had not enjoyed an international solidarity movement, particularly in the US. If so, we could not have shaken Washington's aggressive will. The US administrations had to address the widespread public opinion opposing the meaningless war they had created in Vietnam. The US anti-war movement drew from many forces, communists, leftists, progressive people, those who simply love peace and justice, and others. This political and material strength shook the most stubborn, conservative, and warlike minds in the US political leadership. The Vietnamese people have great appreciation for the peace and anti-war movements in the US and view those movements' contributions as important in shortening the war and reestablishing peace in Vietnam. Not long ago, an American film team visiting Vietnam asked me, is it true that Vietnam profited from the divisions within the United States? No, I answered. We don't think that way. The work that we did took advantage of the American people's spirit, which prizes peace and justice, to oppose again and again the useless and destructive war in Vietnam, which provided no benefit for the American people. It is fortunate that many Americans, particularly the women, understood this point and stood on the side of common sense and peace. That made possible the base leading to la later reconciliation between the people of our two nations. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say to people about... Um, some of you, I think, may have received a handout, and on the handout in the upper right corner is some ways of contacting Judy and I, and I set up a Gmail address, madam.bin.book at gmail.com. 
And it occurred to me in the course of this conference that if anybody wanted to send a, no a message to Madam Bin, if you would email me at that address, then I will be sure that the comments and anything you want to say, that I can collect those. And through Lady Borton, her translator, we will get them to Madam Bin. Thank you. Thank you.